Good evening everyone, welcome to another Cyclone Chasers update. My name's Chris Nitzo. Tonight is the 16th of January 2014. Tonight we're going to talk briefly about the WA low, which is now in WA, and we're going to talk also about the Queensland Coral Sea low, and then in particular we're going to start focusing on the next two lows. The first one expected to eventually affect WA again, and the other one is expected to get into the Coral Sea, whether it affects Queensland or not, too early to say. So let's get into it because we've got a fair bit to cover. The monsoon rages on in uh, over Australia and we can see here that the tropical low is now located just west of the NTWA border in the very, very, very extreme far eastern Kimberley and it will now push in a south to southwest direction and then push in a westerly direction and head closer to the Pilbara coastline. Now, whether it can get off the coast is still up in the air and we have no clear guidance on that just yet. Most of the guidance suggests it stays inland and by the time that some of the guidance pushes it offshore, pushes it offshore around the Exmouth area and by that stage the water temperatures aren't real flash in that region whereas if you go another couple of hundred k's to the east the water temperatures are actually quite good. But this particular region Exmouth south uh, the water temperatures do tend to struggle so we may not see the system reforming into a cyclone if it dips its feet out here. However, if it pushes a little bit further to the east and north, um, up here in the Pilbara coastline or even around the pot pushes offshore around Port Hedland, then it, we're definitely in business. But anyway, it's got very good structure and we said it'll maintain excellent structure through its core, through its life, si life cycle, apologies, uh, and it will now uh, expect it to continue to do so for at least the next two to three days. Over the rest of the northern half of Australia we see a very decent monsoon over the top end with squalls just coming in all day and we've also got a lot of rain coming into the su southern gulf and southwestern gulf. A lot of this cloud streaming across Queensland is all high cloud and very little rain to it if any. If we go further to the east, we are starting to see the development of that low well and truly now developing out here in the far northeastern Coral Sea and definitely starting to show signs of drifting southwards. It's going to push south pretty quickly and it's going to affect New Caledonia. Looking at rainfalls across northern Australia today and up until 9am this morning we had a lot of, a lot of very heavy falls, over 100mm falls in this border region or just on the eastern, uh, the western side of the NTWA border uh, associated with the tropical low. We continue to see falls of 50 to 100mm in the western top end associated with the monsoon and 50 to 100mm falls here on the western gulf. The southern gulf is still getting smashed by rainfall still over 100 millimetres in, in these falls out here. Over the east Queensland coast we still had a lot of shower activity on the coast but not much in terms of significant rainfalls. We did have a bit of a surge pushing through central Queensland. The central coast here copped a little bit of rain in the, in the vicinity of 20 to 50 millimetres over areas and the wet tropics coastline they tend to do really well out of this, this type of scenario. But once again that rainfall will start to die off very shortly as in the next 48 hours as the tropical low out here in the Coral Sea develops develops and pushes southwards and drags a lot of dry air across Queensland. So models are a little bit more divisive in terms of where the tropical low over WA will go. Now the UKMET model which so far has handled this situation really well is showing that the tropical low really remains well and truly inland of the coastal area so therefore the rainfalls along the coast will not be anywhere near as, as strong according to this model as uh, say some of the other models that we have access to and we'll show you shortly which do push it a lot closer to the coast and therefore push a much stronger monsoon in towards it to the north and the east of the system but overall if the if it follows the UK met look it has absolutely no chance of forming into a cyclone and uh, most of the rainfall will then be low located in and around the circulation centre as opposed to the entire coastline getting benefiting from this scenario. So hopefully for a lot of the people here on the Pilbara coast who, who do ask us uh, about their rainfall, uh, this model might be a little bit too far east. We're hoping it'll probably push a little closer to the coast and then drag a lot of moisture into the coast uh, which will create a lot of rainfall in the area. And that's precisely what the GFS model does with the system on about the 17th, so around about tomorrow it'll start to slow down and then on the 18th it'll start to push to the west 
and get very close to that Pilbara coastline. Now remembering that once again if it does push off that coastline out here in the Pilbara region we could see, uh, we should see the intensification of the system. However if it pushes uh, west out here towards the Gascoigne or around the Exmouth west of Onslow area uh, really the, the conditions out there are not at, nowhere near as favourable as they are say uh, just to, just off the coast of Headland for instance. So look at this stage all the model guidance suggests it's going to remain inland but it is still uh, not a done deal it is still close on some model guidance. This scenario from the GFS will create a lot of rain along the coastline uh, and also in the hinterland region and the, uh, the catchment areas. The experimental FIM-8 model which bases a lot of its, its base physics on the GFS model but is a much higher resolution also looking at that westerly motion and then southwesterly motion just inland of the coast and uh, but very touch and go very close and so therefore still too early to call whether it can become a cyclone again or not. Most importantly the highest resolution model that we have is the European model and over the next five days it shows a very similar track to a lot of the other guidance and gets this thing very close to the coast. Now if it gets it as close to the coast as it's showing here we're going to see big rainfalls along the Pilbara coastline and that adjacent inland region. So earlier today in the European it had it pretty well following the UK Met model which is a long way further inland but in tonight's run from the European we see that the system is back to what it was showing yesterday which is a very close to the coast uh, push or a very close to the coast presence over the extended four to seven day period. So as I say folks the, the big issue with this one is going to be the rainfall but if it can push offshore it can develop into a cyclone. Not so much if it pushes west of Onslow but if it pushes to sort of east of Caratha then we're starting to look into uh, looking, looking at the possibility of tropical cyclone development if it can get off the coast. Okay, in the Coral Sea we actually have a developing tropical low. Now in any other situation we would be pumped and ready to go and talking this up but uh, unfortunately folks there really seems to be absolutely zero potential for this to actually come towards the coast and give anyone any, any substantial rainfall or any excitement whatsoever. So the only thing it could do though is develop into a weak cyclone and push towards New Caledonia in the two to three day period. So let's take a look at the track there as it heads towards New Cal. So this is the latest GFS forecast model guidance. We can see Friday afternoon the system to the north. Uh, it is probably a category one tropical cyclone by Friday night or Saturday morning according to the model. But just be aware that the GFS tends to over dramatize situations when it comes to tropical cyclones and, and tries to spin them up a little too quickly. So it may still be a very strong tropical low at that stage but uh, most of the guidance is favouring at least a weak cyclone to be forming out of this. Whether it can form west of 160 and be named by Australia or east of 160 and be named by Fiji, uh, it's touch and go at the moment, but really it's no big issue. Uh, we, it's not going to come anywhere near Australia. You can see here um, the southeast Queensland coast there, uh, but this is a long way and we're talking over a thousand kilometres away from the coastline. So this is uh, Saturday morning as it heads towards New Caledonia. You can see here it actually the GFS the latest GFS actually puts it uh, making landfall on New Caledonia uh, once again Numea is to the southeast so this is the more populated area of the island you can see they're undergoing some gales there on Saturday possibly some damaging winds as well um, on, the, on the Saturday and then the system continues to track pretty quickly out to the south by Sunday morning or overnight Saturday into Sunday where the system is well south now of, uh, of New Caledonia. Numea really cops most of the winds when they come from the south so when, they're, when the system is approaching is when those strongest winds will be uh, hitting the capital of New Cal. If we look at the European, a very similar scenario, except the European uh, wants to be a little bit more, um, a little slower with the system. And so here's Saturday morning, the system is approaching the approaching the New Caledonian mainland. On Saturday afternoon, it makes its closest point of approach. You can see here, Numea expecting uh, 20 to 25, maybe even up to 30 knot winds. But look, if the system remains that far to the west of, of Numea, uh, not going to see too much in terms of any wind damage. If we track the system into the longer term, uh, we see that the system continues to push in a southerly direction. Uh, 
basically due south here and starts to undergo what we call an extra tropical transition on Sunday and if we continue to track it then once it once it undergoes that transition it will continue pushing south south to southeast indefinitely uh, into the future the only the only option there for it is if it does die uh, if it does die completely and and only the low level circulation is left then we might see it the the remnants push to the west but the remnants will be nothing more than an isolated shower uh, and not nothing in terms of wind so Really, folks, that's, there's no threat to Queensland. Uh, once again, if we take a look as the system pushes southwards and we just have a look at the winds right along this southeast Queensland coast, you can see here Brisbane, Gold Coast. <laughs> Unless it sort of pushes a little bit more to the west or is a little bit stronger, even the swells and, and, the, and the winds here aren't going to be excessive. So you're looking at 15 to 20 knotters and pro uh, reasonable swell. So, I mean, if you're a surfer, you wouldn't be... Dis you wouldn't be too disappointed with the system being where it is, but really you'd, you'd prefer it to be a little stronger where it is there um, to give you that swell that you really want. All right, so that's that one. Alrighty, folks, we're going to talk MJO just for a bit here. And look, some of those shorter-term models, the, the long-term monthly models aren't showing the MJO doing much, but the shorter-term models are picking up on this increase in activity over the uh, southwestern Pacific and the eastern Coral Sea, which we're seeing right now. Now, those particular models are amplifying the signal of the MJO. So therefore, we're going to see an increased potential of tropical cyclone formation in the southwest Pacific, or at least tropical low formation. And we're going to see some very active weather conditions in the southwest Pacific, and possibly even in the East Australian region, which means the Coral Sea region, over the next two weeks until the signal weakens again later in January. Now, until then, though, we need to be aware that there is a, that elevated risk of tropical cyclone formation in the, once again, more than likely east of the Coral Sea. And that leads us now to talk about the next tropical low coming from the far east. So around about the Tuesday or Wednesday of next week, we're expecting a very weak disturbance to form out here east of Vanuatu or northeast of Vanuatu in the Fijian area. Now, at that particular point in time, there is some pretty clear model evidence at the moment that there's going to be a fairly obvious ridging in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. So as this system starts to form and develop, it'll continue to push in a westerly direction through the period up to at least at least later next week. So by Thursday next week, we see that the system lies right over the top of the Vanuatu region. Uh, that the Vanuatu region is still outside of our area of responsibility, but the reason we show this to you is the fact that at, the, at that particular point in time, guidance is reasonably clear that it's going to continue pushing in a westerly direction. And so if we look at some of that guidance, when we look at the mid-levels of the atmosphere, we see that there's a nice big ridge over, or a nice big high in the mid-levels of the atmosphere out here over the southwest Pacific. This system is a long way to the north of that, on the northwestern periphery of that. So what that all means is that the system should adopt a track that resembles this type of track at that point in time and there seems to be very little to try and drag it away to the southeast. Now bearing in mind that as we look towards the longer term though there is expected to be a trough through parts of eastern Australia and pushing into the southern Coral Sea and that will complicate things after about day 10. But until about day 10 this tropical low up here is expected to move towards the west and enter the Australian area of responsibility. So looking at the European Ensemble, here is our low next Thursday and if we track that low as we head towards Friday we can see that the area becomes quite broad. There's nothing real strong about it at the time but it is there and it is, it is obviously a feature. Then as we head towards Saturday some of the guidance does make it a little stronger. This is Saturday the 25th and then as we head towards uh, Sunday the 26th we actually start to see a lot of the guidance pushing it fairly well to the west and into the Coral Sea, into the Australian area of responsibility. Now the key here is what's going to be happening in the middle and upper levels of the atmosphere and it's still too far away to say with any certainty but there appears to be at that point in time 
at the surface we have ridging here which is going to create a southeast to northwesterly flow or an east to west flow but in here we have a weakness in the ridge so we have a bit of a trough and so what would happen if there was a system caught up in this area is it would try and head towards the weakness of the ridge so even though it might be heading west at that time it's going to try and dip a little bit south into the weakness of the ridge now look this is still so far away that we can't be saying this for sure but that's what would would happen given the physics of this particular scenario and then as we head towards the 10 day period and look at the mid levels of the atmosphere we can clearly see that there is an upper level trough trying to amplify to the north here over the southeastern parts of Queensland and the southern coral sea that means for this particular system assuming of course that that happens that for this particular system to continue to push west towards the coast it needs to remain well north of that amplifying trough so unfortunately for Queenslanders who are looking for a low to push, push on shore and give a fair bit of rain for the area this isn't overly positive. Now the good positive thing about this particular trough is that it's not looking to be as sharp as the one that's currently over Queensland and current the current one over Queensland is quite sharp and it's it's going to drag everything out to the south and southeast. This one probably won't extend or amplify as far northwards and so therefore there is still that that outside opportunity that even though that it might push this the system whether it's a cyclone or a low more in a south uh, more in a southerly direction it may not completely recurve it to the southeast it may just maintain a more southerly trajectory so it may actually come towards the coast still but that's really so far ahead uh, that we're only guessing and speculating at this point in time but look it's another it's another a little glimmer of hope anyway in the 10 to, 10 to 14 day period for Queenslanders who need some rain. Looking at the GFS ensemble and we can see that that low here is a little bit further to the south according to the GFS modelling at the 10 day period so on the 26th and then continues to push in a west to southwest direction um, and the modelling really is very intent on keeping it moving west so they don't, they don't have that upper trough that the European had they just have a ridge and so that's why you see that the system if you track that orange marker or that orange circle as we head to the uh, as we head over the forecast period you can see it continues tracking to the west so still too far ahead to, to be even uh, even talking about land force so don't worry too much about where the orange where the orange circle is uh, but at least it, it's something to watch early to mid next week there are still some models that are very intent on developing a tropical low in the Gulf of Carpentaria and at this stage though most of the guidance that we have access to suggests that this low will remain very weak and more likely to maybe be a convergence zone or, a, or an eddy along the monsoon trough now despite what this particular model is showing which which expects it to push in a southeast direction we actually expect it to push more in a westerly direction or southwesterly direction and into the northern territory because in the longer term we actually do see a pretty reasonable signal in the 10 to 15 day period of a tropical low forming in the Kimberley this is a whole new one not the one that we're watching now but a whole new one forming out here either in the Timor Sea or near the Kimberley coastline we are starting to see signs of that happening uh, starting probably around mid to late next week so at this stage we don't know if we're really going to see a tropical low in here but we're still going to see this enhanced convergence zone so anything can happen along a monsoon trough and it pretty quickly uh, in that enhanced convergence area and that Gulf of Carpentaria region is going to be constantly under that really really strong convergence zone Okay, so the rainfall over the next few days, we're going to see things dry up over most of Queensland tomorrow. And that rain is really now concentrated in the NTWA region, with that tropical low remaining in this very far east Kimberley region. And we're going to see continued showers on the top end coast, although not as heavy anywhere sort of Darwin and, and eastwards. And also that southern gulf is still going to be seeing a lot of rain, although not as much as they have been the last couple of days. As we head to Saturday, we're going to start to see that rainfall pushing further to the south and starting to push west. We're going to see a re-increase 
of um, of rainfall here in the western top end. We're going to see continued convergence zone in this in this Gulf of Carpentaria, guys, and this is why we're talking about the the potential for a low here because it's just going to be relentless this convergence area in here. So something eventually often has to form if there's just constant uh, northwesterlies, southeasterlies, northeasterlies, all these winds coming together and just smashing the place uh, constantly. You're going to see something form eventually, and so that's why models continuously are trying to pick up a low but not quite sure what to do with it. On Sunday we see the rain actually starts to push further to the west and we actually start to see some rain hitting the coastline here in the Kimberley all the way down to about Port Hedland and we actually start to see a lot of rain in the Goldfields region. We also see an increase in rainfall over the eastern half of the Gulf of Carpentaria and we continue to see heavy monsoonal squalls on the western top end. You can see here the East Queensland coast now suffering from tropical low or what could be tropical cyclone Dylan by that stage on the Sunday as he's, as he's now well east of Queensland or well east of southeast Queensland and he's dumping dry air all through the uh, the inland all the way through to the coast and getting that dry air penetrating a long way to the north too which is unfortunate because a lot of people have been enjoying some of the rain particularly up in the wet tropics coastline uh, as we head to Monday we see that rainfall pushing further to the west and also remaining in that in inland part of WA as well squall lines continue over the Northern Territory and, and activity increases further over the Gulf Country. We start to see a little bit of moisture coming back onto the coast on Monday anywhere north of about Cardwell and possibly that, that Cairns region starting to see some of those showers again but really any of the heavy stuff remaining well to the north. So in the four to eight day period the a real focus of activity becomes the Pilbara coastline as that tropical low pushes to the west and the other focus of activity becomes the eastern Gulf of Carpentaria or western Queensland coast which is the western peninsula and so we see a lot of rainfall in that area in the four to eight day period and we start to see a little bit of moisture seeping back into Queensland so we do start to see very isolated showers and thunderstorms developing over the inland half of Queensland. But folks, that's that's what we've got uh, at the moment. So an interesting period coming up, maybe not in the next few days, as the particularly over the east. Uh, but in the east, after about a week's time, things start to get interesting. And obviously, the west, the western half of Australia, is what we need to watch over the next few days, as that tropical low pushes to the west and may make it as far as the coast. All right, folks. Thanks for watching. Talk to you again tomorrow.